Hello, everybody. Hopefully my voice won't break. Um, my name is Lance, and the title of my project is Aerosol Dynamics of Particles at High Relative Humidity. Can everyone hear me all right? Yeah. I can just shout. Cool. Um, let's move on. Uh, so I'm based in Bristol, and the project is also funded by Chiesi. So the reason we have this project is because we care about health and uh, medical inhalers. So here we have a amazing foster inhaler PMDI, could be any other PMDI or nebulizers. In this case, the PMDI will be connected to a spacer uh, with the nebulizers usually it's hooked to a mask. Either way, it's gonna generate a plume with uh, the pharmaceutical uh, well, the part particles or the range of sizes, and it will enter the respiratory system and hopefully to the site of the position that it uh, desired. So <clears throat> during this sort of traveling, it'll have a brief time to adjust to the ambient relative humidity, which is usually around 40%, could be a bit higher when it's rainy. And once it enters the respiratory system, it can get as high as almost 100%. So that drastic change in the relative humidity uh, means that if the particle has any hygroscopicity in it, it could absorb the water and then grow in size which eventually might affect its deposition profile and hence sort of affect its therapeutic effect. That works too. So the way I'm going through this project starts by looking at single particles. So we have some already available models such as the EAM or uh, SATCAST developed by Dan, which I'll talk a bit more in detail in the next slide, uh, as well as experim experimental techniques such as the electrodynamic balance, which we can look at the uh, sort of morphology, size, uh, phase function of these single particles uh, at various uh, relative humidities, ranging from zero to essentially like 100%, and um, as well as control the temperature. With that kind of information, we can then move on to look the plume size distribution as a whole. So using techniques such as Sympatec or uh, aerodynamic particle sizers, uh, I have a setup at Bristol built to measure the same plume using two aerodynamic particle sizers to look at two different relative humidities, uh, just so I can have the, oh, no, too much. Um, just so I can compare that with the single particle results and see if the plume works within a similar framework in terms of the thermodynamics and kinetics as the single particles. And with that information, then I'd like to move on to develop a model, which would then help us to predict the plume development over a certain time frame within under certain conditions, if we have the right parameterization. And once we have that, we can start addressing some questions relating to formulation and drug deposition. I'm currently using mainly the nebulizer, but I've briefly looked at soft missing halos as well. We'll come back to it, and I'm hoping to incorporate PMDI soon as well into the system. Uh, I just want to highlight that a big part of my project is to develop this new instrumentation, which I have a pretty H diagram later, hopefully. But first, I want to start actually uh, having a look at this because I thought the modeling part will be the most challenging. But lucky for me, Dying Now Group has developed the single aerosol drying kinetics and trajectory, which is also called SATCAT, a good block uh, model. And they can do a range of things. So, for example, on the uh, left, uh, we have a particle starting at a 25 uh, microns in radius, and then we can put it under a range of different relative humidities, in this case, from 60 up to 100. And we can see sort of mag magnitude of the size change as well as its drying rate. With some tweaks to that, I can also set these on the uh, right. So I can also set the relative humidity to be 60 and then vary the initial size of the particle. And again, sort of interrogate the information of the, of the drying kinetics of the single particles. So combining that with, uh, with some of my experimental results from the plume size distribution, then I can start putting a plume model together, predicting if they do agree the plume with a single particle, then I can start putting a model together to predict the size change with a couple of assumptions. Now, moving to the experimental side, my project is a bit of a continuation of Nat's work in the, uh, who's graduated from the group. And she has looked at Respima, uh, which is a soft missing inhaler using spray tech and the aerodynamic particle sizer at ambient conditions. 
uh, essentially I'm varying the ambient condition, but the first thing or the thing that puzzled me last year this time was it's been very consistent that uh, we've been getting these bimodal distributions and I, I've tried with saline, just salt as well, and still the bimodal distribution, so don't understand why. And I think I found the answer using Sympatec at PAZ, so it has a very high time resolution. Um, and essentially the point I want to highlight is just, so the uh, size distribution shifts, so it starts from the red and then it moves to the blue and then eventually it goes to this sort of black peak. And these are snapshots. So uh, it's taken like hundreds of samples and then the red would be the first three and then the blue is like the middle three and the black is like the last three samples. So I just want to highlight the idea that the plume is quite dynamic and the shifts from larger size to smaller size. And uh, so if we combine sort of the red with the black, then we get ourselves the bimodal shape uh, that's been seen consistently We're using other measurements as well. And a bit about my setup. So I'm using this uh, aerodynamic particle sizer, which has a set flow rate uh, at the intake of five liters per minute, which I cannot change. And it has two lasers here, essentially, because the flow rate is set. Uh, so it's measuring the speed for the particle to travel from one laser to another, and that gives it the size information. And then it bends it into one of the size bins between half to 20 microns. And my setup looks like this. So it's tandem APS measurements because I have two of them sitting in parallel, and I have humidified air coming from the top, going into a 3D printed splitter, and the black hole in the front is where I insert the actuation device or usually the nebulizer, um, which then splits into two. So the left-hand side, uh, it goes straight into the spacer, which is there to maintain the environment, especially the relative humidity. Uh, so that would give me, that would go straight, feed straight into this APS and give me the higher relative humidity reading. And the other one, it's the same setup, except for it travels through a nafim dryer, which dries the aerosol going through it. So this would give me a, a lower relative humidity reading. Um, yeah. So this is like a typical result I'd get from, uh, from the tandem APS uh, readings. And the blue part in the back is the experimental data. And what I've done is to just fit it a bimodal distribution on top of them. Um, and this is just saline. In this case, the higher relative humidity was around 95% and the lower was around 76%. Um, and because the second mode, so mode two, is usually uh, much more sensitive to the environment and the water, uh, uh, the humidity. So I'm, what I'm doing is just having a read of the value here. So the mode two in the size distributions and then compare them. So as expected, the mode two for the higher relative humidity was larger, which is good because we would expect them to uptake more water. And the next thing I can do is to just get a ratio between them. So it's just literally the mode two of the higher relative humidity divided by that of the lower. And I haven't came up with a nice name for that, so I just call it a ratio. Uh, and I then can compare that with the single particle results. In this case, it's just saline, so I could just use E-AIM, so it's an easier way to obtain the radio growth factor from these specific relative humidities and do exactly the same thing. So I would divide the radio growth factor of the higher relative humidity by that of the lower relative humidity and get a, a quite agreeing result. So that was a good day. Something worked. Um, yeah, another thing I could do with the, uh, with the APS data is to see Instead of having a look, having uh, looking at the sort of total distribution, I can break it down because it can it, it takes uh, one sample per second, so I can make a size distribution for each second and sort of see how the plume propagates. So we, we can see it it shows agreement with the sympathetic results, although the relative humidity parameter is vary. So this one is very high. Uh, and the sympathetic would be ambient relative humidity, but you can see the sort of development of this larger. Uh, size distribution first and then slowly shifting towards the smaller end. So that's also a good news. Uh, yeah, another thing I just want to demonstrate when I run it, I always leave some uh, quite a long background just to make everything's fine, but then I can cut it just to obtain relevant information. So in summary, the size 
distribution of the plume changes depending on the relative humidity and the magnitude of the shift seems to agree uh, of the size distribution of the plume agrees with like the single particle uh, um, yeah, information. So what I want to move on to is to look into some different ingredients, uh, starting probably with uh, BDPs and uh, salbutamol sulfate. And also I want to incorporate some different formulations. I have already designed something for soft mist inhalers, but I'm looking into incorporating PMDI's formulations into this as well. Um, with that, thank you for listening. And uh, I'm happy to take any difficult questions.